A wonderful news from the UK with the NHS doing a dramatic U-turn on much of the woke craziness we have seen in the past decade. The hard left activism masquerading as inclusiveness. The UK Telegraph reports the NHS will crack down on transgender ideology in hospitals with terms like chest feeding set to be banned, referring to people who have ovaries rather than women will also be prohibited under the plans to ensure hospitals use clear language based on biological sex. Hallelujah. The new constitution will ban transgender women from being treated on single-sex female hospital wards to ensure women and girls receive privacy and protection in hospitals. Trans women and human rights activist Miranda Yardley joins me now. Miranda, the Health Secretary Victoria Atkins, she's a, will announce these changes and more to the NHS constitution. Why do you think we are seeing such a departure from what has been instituted in recent years? And as a, as a trans woman, do you feel victimised by any of these new measures? I, I think the, the reason for uh, the, the rollback of these, um, these policies that we're seeing is, uh, is just simply because in, um, in the, in the, in, in the world of reality, uh, a position that is based upon reality always wins. The this this whole ideological concept of the trans woman exists solely to conceal the fact that someone is a that someone is a man, and that um, all trans women are by default men. And it creates a massive clash of rights that we see with women. Um, the erasure of language that we've seen, however, is 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 quite quite interesting. Um, in that, what 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 it does is it manipulates language to uh, affirm this idea of uh, transgender identities and the erasure of land. The, the erasure of language has. R really, over the last ten years, it has been championed as much by and before women who become men or uh, sats men as much as it has by the um, the men who claim to be women. Now we've got a group of some one hundred and thirty MPs, peers, doctors, psychiatrists academics also writing to the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. Uh, they've demanded a public inquiry into transgender ideology in schools and in the NHS. Uh, this is after the bombshell CAS report revealed uh, the lack of evidence in, in transgender medical care. Is there much of an appetite for another inquiry or review of this nature in the UK? Is it likely to happen? Whether it happens or not, I don't know. We this government is approaching the end of its life, and it um, it it does appear rather to be uh, falling apart at the edges. I would say, however, that I I believe that a public inquiry into how this ideology has taken grip of public institution, how it has infiltrated itself into schools and public places, and how it has. has Le how it has led our institutions and our our public figures to frankly embarrass themselves making the most absurd statements you've ever seen in your life to as if you've ever seen the um the the coverage around the rapist the the, the man Isla Bryson who was convicted of rape and sexual assault against women and put into a woman's prison and the inability of our politicians to describe a man as a man it is quite astonishing um the i'm i'm glad that the inquiry is being called for what i would always question here is why it's taken so many people so darn long to mm. put their head up and say and do the right thing and say this is this is unfair it's instrumentalizing children for the benefit of men and 
it, it, it is it, it completely lacks any form of evidence base there is no there is no basis either scientifically philosophically or medically to affirm th this concept of transgender ideology particularly in children uh, let's talk about Scotland. The first minister there, Humza Youssef, is fighting for his uh, political survival. His coalition with the Greens has collapsed. Uh, the Scottish Conservatives have launched a vote of no confidence against him. How much of his troubles are connected to the rather radical policies he's backed, including uh, around transgender policies and also those Orwellian hate speech laws? Oh God, yeah. I mean, he—it's totally the—he um, he is the instrument of his own undoing, as is the the SNP. Mm. The SNP, exactly what happens when you have a uh, a political party that ha that is uh, you know that, that has an un pretty much an uncontested uh, majority. It was propped up by the Butte House Agreement in the latter years with a coalition with the Green Party, who once sold themselves as the party of uh, science and and now is frankly the party of nonsense. <laughs> now you're someone who has uh, transitioned, uh, uh, you're, you're a transgender person, do you see yourself as a woman, uh, a trans woman or do you see yourself as a man? What's How would you describe yourself and how do you feel if you are misgendered? Um, that's a really interesting question. Um, the first of all, uh, trans women are men. All trans women are men. Uh, the, the whole idea of transgender is wholly a political position. The it, it, it is a use of language that is an attempt to conceal from the individual to take that individual and plant in in people's minds that the person that they're talking about is on some level a woman and that to to, to therefore affect the way that people see that person um i do not use preferred pronouns for anybody i have had this position for uh, a, a very very long time pretty much since i got involved in this debate which i got involved in because I saw the completely unacceptable threats and um, actions that were being taken against women who spoke out against men who were claiming the who, who, who were claiming access to women's spaces and were essentially branding women who they disagreed with as as bigots and pushing them out of public life. Uh, I think the the whole mm. concept of transgender is a uh, is a bogus social identity, and the sooner as a society we move away from this, I think we'll be liberating for everybody. And do you find that the transgender activism we have seen in the recent years has actually made life worse for? Uh, trans people it used to be live and let live uh, attitude amongst many people but now uh, in the eyes of some being trans is almost a political position and it perhaps is inviting hostility that wasn't there before oh it's totally a political position uh there there was a situation if you go back uh, you, you know if you go back a decade or more that there was i think quite a lot of public sympathy for you know your your average man in the street the, the uh public sympathy for people who claimed to be trans w was there and uh you know it was very much a live and let live attitude but now this i mean now whatever trans is it we don't even know what what it means because anybody can be trans pretty much any use any useful idiot out there can be trans it's become a meaningless label 
Um, not not that not that the whole idea anyway, which is built upon stereotypes, has has had a particularly uh, solid intellectual base anyway. Uh, Miranda Yardley, thank you so much for your time this evening. Really appreciate it.